Hey guys, today we're going to do something a little bit differently. I'm going to have more of a chat with you all. A little bit of a blog, a little bit of an update, a little bit of a chat in just a moment. I'm Mel from Mel's Divination. If you don't know me, welcome. This is my channel. And I usually do Witchy Wednesdays, Flip Through Fridays, Tarot Live Readings, and Astrology on the weekends. That's my main focus of my content. But many of you have been following the channel for a long time and from time to time i like to give you guys a little bit of an update of what's going on with me what's going on in my life um, particularly with my cat or just things going on and i haven't done one in a long time so this is going to be more of an informal talk i might edit a little bit if i get way too like out there but i have some pretty main thoughts that i want to share with you all there is a purpose of this. It's not just to chat. I want to update all of you guys on what's going on with Tonks, my cat, because she was very, very sick last week. And there's been some videos that I've posted. So I wanted to fill you all in of what's going on there, a more updated situation there. And I also wanted to update you guys with something that's going on with me personally, and I don't usually share a lot of personal stuff here, but it's something that I feel I kind of need to share. It's part of my personal journey, and I don't know. I've just been called to share it. I might do more than one video about the personal part, but this is a start, and we got to start somewhere, right? So get yourself a cup of tea. This is going to be more of like a podcast kind of chat. I'm not really going to be showing anything or demonstrating anything I am going to be talking about the cat so let's talk about her first if you didn't catch the two videos that I posted last week as I'm filming right now it is March 1st I posted two videos last week one was I was a hot mess I was literally sitting in the emergency room vet hospital and had been there for hours and I was running on two hours of sleep because she had gotten so sick. If you don't know who Tonks is, go back and check some of my other videos. She is my beautiful, sweet, familiar cat. She is almost 15 years old, turning 15 in the month of April. I've had her since she was six weeks old and we grew up together and she has been my comfort animal. I have been alone, meaning living on my own with no roommate, with no partner that entire time. I've been through a lot in my life and I'm going to do another video about that because I recently realized it's because Pluto was transiting my first house. But we're going to talk about that another time. We're not even here for that. Tonks has been there through everything, through multiple moving, through multiple boyfriends and heartbreaks, through many different deaths that I've had to deal with, through different jobs, different careers, everything. Loss of friends, loss of family, and she's still there. At the end of the day, she is the one that is with me 24-7 when I'm having a hard time. Do I have a support system? Yeah, but everybody in my support system, they don't live with me, and they have their own lives. and. Sometimes at two in the morning when you need a hug, that's what's there is my cat. She's my family. I've chosen not to have children and she is my child. I'm not justifying that to anybody. It's, this is, it is what it is. Accept it or don't watch this video. <laughs> really, that's all there is to it. But I just wanted to give a little bit of background of why. Because some people hear me talking about a cat and they'll be like, what's the big deal? This cat is my world. She is my best friend. She is my emotional support. And she is there when nobody else is. So <laughs> when she doesn't do well, I don't do well. And she does have, because of her age, a lot of pre-existing conditions. And I did mention this previously in another video. She has 
always been obese and that is because she weighs 21 pounds she's also long and tall she's longer than most cats and taller than most cats so there's that too but she's still very overweight for her size and that is because the only food she can eat is very high in calories the only food not that she chooses to eat but the only food her body tolerates is very high in calorie. So I actually only give her less than a half of a cup of this food a day, which is much less than what is called for, for her size. But because it's so high calories and she's not super active, that's why she's heavy. With that, it also is because this digestive thing has happened because when she was six months old, she had an intestinal blockage and had to have emergency surgery on Christmas Eve. And since then, she's had a lot of stomach sensitivity. She probably has IBS, but I've never gone through the process of paying for an ultrasound to diagnose it because I'm pretty sure she already has it and I don't really need that. I just act as if she does. So she's sensitive to foods, she's sensitive to litters and perfumes, she's sensitive to smells around the house, she has allergies, she may have asthma, she is sensitive to all kinds of medications. A few years back she got diagnosed with hyperthyroidism, which is something that can be maintained for many years with medication and she has been on that and it's been non-dramatic, it's been not a big thing. But about uh, in June, we changed vets, and in December, I had a concern about something that was going on with her back, and I brought her in. It was like a lump that she had had for a long time, and I found out that she has cancer there. Um, that's actually not even what this video is about. She got sick from something else. The While we were there, the vet mentioned she had a heart murmur, which I didn't know she had. I didn't realize it, and that is a big factor in what how we would treat the cancer how strong is her heart what can her heart handle what do we want to do and because of that i and that was right after christmas i found out she had cancer the day after christmas and in thanksgiving i lost a very 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 close family member and it was unexpected they were sick but they were getting better so it was very unexpected and sudden and I had just been going through that. I'm still not over it, but I had just been going through that grieving process. And then I find out she has cancer. And it's just like, it just felt like I was getting knocked out every time I turned around. I also ended up having health issues that popped up that came forward in December as well, which I will talk about in a little bit because it has to do with where I'm going with my personal story. But sorry, I'm just checking on her. I made the decision to have a cardiac ultrasound done on her heart to see what level her heart is at. That was $500. So $500 I don't have because the economy is dropping drastically and I'm not having the kind of clientele I was having and things have been stressful around that area too, which I don't, I don't like talking about that. So we're not going to have a big conversation about that right now. But $500 I didn't have, went on a credit card. And the results came back that she had a maintainable heart issue that wasn't life, it wasn't life threatening um, and it could be managed with medication. The problem is the only medication that it can be managed with causes digestive issues. And if it causes digestive issues, she's gonna have them. She also has initial stages of kidney disease, so it's just starting, and I tried to switch her to kidney special food, and she, she won't eat it. She won't eat it, and she can't digest it, so we got to give her what she'll eat. Um, she will literally starve herself, and that's not okay either. Now, to the heart situation, it was determined that she could have surgery on her cancer. That's what started the whole thing. And she needed to have this, it was a beta blocker, which humans are on. She needed to have this medication um, for a month before we could decide if she would be stable enough to have surgery with this medication. And the way that it started, she went on, I actually want to look at a calendar so I can tell you guys the date, but she went on the medication. She started it. I started it late because... I had a hard time getting it. it. Took me a while. She started it on Sunday, the 11th of February. She had one pill. She's supposed to have 
the, the proper dose is two. We were supposed to work up to it, but it was supposed to be one pill every day for two weeks and then increasing it to two pills every day for life. And she started on the 11th. By the 14th, she was throwing up. Now, most cats, some cats throw up. My cat doesn't. She doesn't throw up. If she throws up, it's either because she has a hairball, which is rare, or something's wrong usually. But sometimes it could just be because she ate too fast. And that seemed to be the case on the 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm throwing up for you, Mel. <laughs> um, that's my present to you. And I just kind of kept an eye on her and it, it went away. It was like a one-time event. So it wasn't a major concern. Didn't talk to the vet. Didn't worry about it. Actually forgot about it until Sunday the 18th when she started to throw up again. And I realized that she hadn't eaten her evening treats, which she loves. And she then, which I'm not, I'll spare you guys the details, but something was coming out of one of her ends for that entire night, every hour or half hour on the hour until 6 a.m. And it started at 10 o'clock at night. And it was a very long night. It was a long night of reaching out to her vet, like 24 hour chat, trying to decide, do I need to bring her into the ER vet? Can I just wait it out until her vet's ready? And I'm alone and I'm up all night and I'm crying and I'm scared. And I don't know this. She's never been sick like this. Even with her sickness, she's never been sick like this. And she's moaning, which she doesn't do. And it was just horrible. And I didn't know what was wrong with her. And I called her at her vet at 7 a.m. and there's this one person there. Everybody is amazing except for this one individual that answers the phone sometimes. And they're not very helpful. They're not very kind. And they're almost like bothered by you. And she basically was like, you need to take her to the emergency vet because she's going to need IVs and she's going to need liquids and she's going to need to be hospitalized to be maintained. And we can't do that here. That is not what the emergency vet did. And I was avoiding the emergency vet because it's $185 to walk into the door. That doesn't include anything. Her vet, she has special insurance through them, so her visit would have been very little money. And they know her. And it would have been an appointment, and we would have been in and out. An emergency vet is like an emergency room hospital. We were there for seven and a half hours. And this vet used to keep, because i that's where I took her when she had the blockage, you would keep your pet with you while they examined them. And then they'd come back and forth with test results and things like that while you were in an exam room. That's not how they do it since COVID. They take the pet the second you walk in the door and you do not, you do not see that animal again until you leave with them. So they, we were away from, she was away from me for seven hours and she has very high anxiety. So she was probably thrown in a cage because they handed me her carrier and she loves her carrier. She would have been happy and content in her carrier if they kept her in it. It was excruciating. Um, and all they did was take blood work and give her nausea medication. It was $590 for that because it was an emergency room vet. And they sent us on our way. And she was sick on, she continued to be sick. Monday, Tuesday, she didn't throw up, but she didn't eat, which is not my cat. So by Tuesday night, she's not eating. I call them. They call me back. They tell me to come in and get more nausea medica medication, another $40. All right. Wednesday morning, she's still not eating. This is bad. My cat has not eaten since Saturday. And cats, especially obese cats, their organs can start to shut down if they don't eat for too many days in a row. She was drinking water at least, but this is not my cat. She's not better. Something's still wrong. So I called her vet. And they were like, come in at two. All this time, I'm not being able to work, by the way. I'm working like t tiny, like I'm making $20. I need to be making uh, minimally several hundred dollars a day just to maintain the bills of this household. I'm not talking about being extravagant. I'm talking about staying alive. And I was making $30 a day because I wasn't able to show up. And I don't have a job that has sick days and in vacation time and all of that. And I am just like hemorrhaging money. I'm not able to work. I'm spending so much money on her. She's not getting better. It was terrible. It was terrible. I was more stressed out than I have been in a very, very long time. Um, and I, I did a couple of videos on there. And I brought her in on Wednesday to her vet, who I actually do really like. 
And and uh, the other thing that to back up a minute at the ER vet, they the blood work did say that her thyroid was functioning too low. She was actually being over medicated. So we took her, we cut her thyroid med down in half and we had taken her off of the heart medication because they suspected it was probably the heart medication mixed with the digestive issues and her kidney issues because it can take a long time for the kidneys to clear stuff like that when they're compromised. So I brought her into her regular vet and the regular vet was like, why didn't the ER vet give her an appetite stimulator when you called again? Because they suck? I don't know. Like, this is why I didn't want to go to them. Because they're the only vet that's an emergency hospital that is a hospital vet that's a specialty vet in the entire state of Rhode Island. You have no idea how many people live in Rhode Island and how many pets there are. And the closest out of state hospital is over an hour and a half away and not really easy to get to because it's in Boston. And if you've never driven in Boston like me, you're not going to take your cat on the subway. You're sick scared cat on the subway anyway back up from that so her vet on wednesday said suggested we do an x-ray on her because that's part of her her coverage through them and it wouldn't cost me anything and it would give us a better idea of what's going on a little bit it's not a full exam like it's not an ultrasound but it would give a better idea so they did. They gave her an x-ray um, and we looked at it and we saw that her poor little tummy was full of gas. She had nothing in her, no food, no, nothing digesting. It was empty, full of gas. And they kept saying to me, think about how you would feel when you're full of gas. And that's actually going to be a part of my story later on, <laughs> oddly enough, um, that you're not really very comfortable when you have a lot of gas in you and you don't really want to eat makes sense except we got to get food in this cat so she doesn't die so she doesn't accidentally kill herself so she kept on the nausea medication the the appetite stimulator four pills by the way forty dollars <laughs> so now i've paid five hundred dollars over five hundred dollars for the er vet visit forty dollars for new medication for the nausea medication and another forty dollars for the appetite stimulator okay so far in one week and I've lost thousands of dollars of work at that point um, that I'm not going to make up. There's no way. I mean, unless if I hit the lottery, there's no way I'm going to make that kind of money up right now. Not not with the way things are looking with with work. Um, but this is not a poor me story. It's just an example of why I'm stressed. Now, Wednesday, we get her the appetite stimulator. She starts eating. She's, she, she doesn't eat a lot. Oh, and she's also moved herself into my bathroom, which is extremely small. I've had to climb over her to get to the toilet, to get in and out of the shower. Um, she doesn't usually hang out in the bathroom. So that was kind of like a safe space. Cats like to go to where it's like where they feel confined when they're scared or sick or hurt. And I think that's what was going on there. So I spent a lot of time on my bathroom floor too with her. Now, Wednesday, Thursday was pretty good. Friday was pretty good. Not great. She was still in the bathroom. Um, she would come out, use her litter box, drink water, go back. Um, she was eating very, very little. Eating, but not a lot. And not her regular food that she absolutely loves. She was eating tuna. She was eating wet food. She doesn't like wet food, but she was eating a little bit of wet food. I could get her to eat a little bit of that. Um, but by Friday, she seemed to be doing much better. She was still in the bathroom, but she was eating more. She hadn't been physically sick since Sunday, Sunday into Monday morning. So my smart, stupid self, <laughs> we all make mistakes, didn't give her her anti-nausea medication Friday night because I thought she didn't need it because this nausea medication was not easy to give her. It wasn't a pill. It was a syringe that you had to shoot it into her mouth and um, she would foam and spit because of it, it would make her foam and spit for, for 10 minutes. And it was just awful. Um, she's, she takes pills very easily. Fluids, not so much. So I'm thinking, why torture her? She's better. Saturday morning, she starts puking again. Not good. So I call her vet. And her vet is like, yeah, I'm not feeling good about any of this. She's going backwards. She's not making any progress. She hasn't made enough progress with what she should have been making with the medication she's been on. I'm not, there's nothing else. Her vet was open until two. It was Saturday, like at 10. 
She's like, there's nothing else I can do. She's like, aside from her getting hospitalized, which we don't offer that here, you'd have to take her to the emergency hospital or having an ultrasound done, which also you have to do at the emergency hospital. There, I've done everything I can in office for her. You're gonna have to think about what you wanna do here. If you don't wanna get the ultrasound, if you don't wanna have her hospitalized, you're probably looking at end of life. And I was not expecting that. Like she had been making gains. To me, I thought it was going well. And I just was like, oh my God. Like I, I lost, uh, Saturday was the worst day. I lost, I think I posted a video of me crying. I'm not even sure. Saturday was terrible. And I also had to house it. So I had to drive. I had to leave her alone and drive an hour and back to take care of the other kitties. And I was literally on the phone as I was driving saying to the person, she might be dead by the time I come back. I might come home and she's dead. Um, because I really, she was really not good. Really, really not good. She just didn't look right. And she was crying so much. And like, physically, she just looked, she looked awful. And I can't even explain it besides that. And I was really scared and I was alone. Um, and my mom had asked me if I wanted them to come over. And I just was like, for what? So you can stare at me and be sad? Like, I don't know what's going on yet. I don't know if I need to put her down. I don't know. I may have to think about that. I was petrified of having to put her down because I didn't want to make that call. I, I'm the only one who can make that call. And I didn't want to make that call too soon. Um, but I've already known for a good year and a half since I found out about a service that exists that people, there's a, there's a few companies that will come to your home when you have to put down a pet, they'll do it in your home for more money. Um, but it's so much less traumatizing to you and to the pet. And I just thought when I found out about that years ago, I was like, I'm doing this. Like, so even if I had brought her into the hospital, like I was also struggling with, do I bring her into the hospital? How much the hospital wouldn't give me any idea of how much it would cost. No quotation, not even a minimal. They wouldn't give me an idea of how much it would cost without seeing her again, which would have been a minimal $500 for her to be seen again, which I might've turned around and taken her back home and it would have made nothing and it would have just stressed her out more. So I decided I wasn't going to go that route. And I, I, if she was going to die, I wanted her to die where she was safe and comfortable, not where she was alone and scared. Um, so while all that was going on, I called a couple. I started looking at at home euthanasia companies, which was devastating, but better than having her it done in a vet. Um, reading the details and stuff is heartbreaking. And then because this is my child. <laughs> I'm looking at killing my child is how it makes me feel. I know that that's dramatic, but that's how it makes me feel. And then I was calling the hospitals in Massachusetts. I was calling around in the Boston area. What do they offer? How much money is it? What can they do for her, if anything? What would be the baseline? What does it look like? And I, the last place I called, they were called Tufts, T-U-F-T-S. They were amazing. Um, they're about 40, they're about 60 minutes from my house. And the girl I spoke to was just the sweetest thing in the world. And she was like, you know, I really think it could be as simple as she's still recovering from the meds being off and you didn't give her her dose. She goes, it really could be as simple as that. She goes, of course, I can't say without seeing her, but it might be as simple as that. And it's in her vocalizations were actually a side effect of one of the medications that she was on. One of the, the, the meal, the food app, the appetite stimulator, um, vocalizations like, like, oh, like that's how she, she was like, whoa, like it was so sad. And I, I couldn't help her and I hated it. And, and so anyway, they ended up encouraging me to wait. They were a 24 hour hospital, but they don't do ultrasounds until Mondays. The person who does them aren't, isn't there on the weekends. And I was calling on a Saturday afternoon. So the only thing they could have done is me is, is monitoring her is stabilizing, but she wasn't crashing. She wasn't, she just wasn't okay. I didn't know if she needed to be hospitalized. She just was clearly uncomfortable and scared and, and not sure what's going on. So I decided not to, and I contacted an old mentor of mine who I 
don't really talk to very much anymore. I don't use her services the way I used to. Um, my practice, my work has gone in a different direction than the focus that she's on, which is there's nothing wrong with that. We, I've kind of grown in a different way and she, she's grown this way and I've grown that way. So we don't really, she's very, um, light worker, star seed, um, 5D, she's very, uh, I don't know how to say it without sounding nasty because I love her. She's very sweet. She's very up in the clouds. So her name's Tracy. She's amazing, but I don't really resonate with everything that she teaches at this point. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's why there's so many practitioners out here because what I connect with might not be what you connect with and et cetera. The light is changing, as you can see, so I'm having to like readjust myself just a little bit while we're, we're chatting. Almost to the end of the story of the cat, <laughs> promise. Anyway, I asked Tracy to if she did any animal communication or animal healing, and she didn't do communication, but she did do healing. She's a Reiki master, and we talked about it a little bit. She doesn't work on the weekends, and she discussed what she could do for Tonks, and I was like, let's go for it, let's see, uh, why not, right? Like at this point, I'm at my wit's end, let's see. And she did a healing session Monday, went, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Now, I talked to her on Saturday. Saturday night, Tonks started getting better and better and better and better and better, and now she's not only better, but she's eating so much right now she's eating too much and she's griping about it today is friday and it is the last day of her nausea and appetite stimulator medication i also called her vet on monday morning just to check in because that's what i had said i was going to do and i requested they wanted to continue the nausea medication because i was out and i requested a non-liquid form because it's a pain in the ass to give her. And it was funny because the vet tech was like, that's unique. Cats usually, it's easier to do liquid than whatever. Went and got it, another $40. <laughs> yeah, are you, are you keeping the tally here? How much? Also, my aunt and uncle who I'm house-sitting for were amazing the entire time. They were helping me out. They were making me laugh because they've raised so many cats. And it's and they don't have children. And it's a lot easier to connect, to, to get, to talk to somebody who gets it basically. Um, not that my family doesn't care, but they just don't, they don't get it. They don't get it. And it's okay. It's okay. They don't have to get it. Now, yeah, Tonx is back to normal. She is sitting across from me in her spot on the couch. If you watched my live either Thursday or Wednesday, you'd see that she was in her normal spot. She's been griping about not having food, enough food, because she's starving. Um, I am worried a little bit about what the going off of this medication will do for her, but I'm pretty sure she's going to be okay at this point because the healing seems to have worked. The the heart medication that caused an issue is now out of her system, and I hope we're past the problem now. Um, and it has made me so incredibly grateful that she is still here. And there's some stuff that I haven't gotten done in life because of all that. Like the world had to stop for a bit because of that. And it put a lot of things into perspective. With that said, we're going to start talking a little bit more about my stuff 